Yeah, sorry about that. Frankly ridiculous. Um, I mean, older players aren't better, so 51 is not better than 31. Uh, I'm incredibly overweight. That's no good. Um, I don't study very much because I don't see the point. I don't play. Very, I don't play in slow tournaments very often. And, and usually, by not studying in the past, I could beat twenty two, twenty three hundreds easy. If I wanted to beat people my own rating or higher, that had to do a lot of work. But now, I lose to everybody. I lose with white a lot too. There was a year like about 30 years ago where I lost zero games with white and I played a lot, but I just didn't lose with white. Um, now I lose every game with white. Anyway, since I can't play well anymore, I can be entertaining and not just by making silly jokes. I played a very entertaining game. And after the game ended, my opponent said, thank you for playing that way. We started thinking on move one. And I said, yeah, but when I do that, usually I lose. He was very happy I didn't play D4 and play like 20 moves of a King's Indian, which I thought about doing. I just wanted to play a game without any theory. And I did. But what I did was wrong. And then I missed a couple things. And he played perfect the whole game. But yeah, it used to be I just beat people, and now I don't, because I used to play better. And for everybody in my age bracket, these things happen. Like Shabalov, for example, was the four-time U.S. champion, and he was one of the top five players in the U.S. for, I don't know, 20 years. And in the World Open two years ago, he won his first game from a bad position. And then he had seven draws in a row, pared down every game. And then he withdrew. He didn't play the last round. Shabalov seven draws in a row is weird. That's that's not how he plays. Um, yeah. So you just you just can't play as well as he used to. And, you know, obviously you saw Kasparov, you know, he can't play at all compared to the way he used to play. Um, you know, so, I mean, he must feel bad even though – you know, he gives excuses when it's over. But, I mean, if I was Kasparov, I wouldn't play competitive chess anymore because it's embarrassing. I mean, the young people today don't realize how strong he was. They see the Kasparov now who gets his ass kicked. Um, and that's what you guys see. You guys see me play on the stream, which I don't take too seriously. You know, I act silly during the stream and I lose to you know, 1400s. But when I do take it seriously in a tournament, I'm still losing. Man, that's a 1400s. But. Although I played a 1500 in an extra rated game a few days ago. Was I losing that game? Maybe. Yeah, I was losing that game. All right, so, you know. Well, Anon doesn't play as well as he used to either, but. Anand hasn't gone downhill like, you know, Kasparov has. Um, Anand still works really hard. Um, and, you know, Anand was top five in the world, like, his whole life. And now he is, you know, it's number 15 or 20. I'm sure he would like to be better, but he's still pretty good. Um, yeah, players like Korshnoi and Anand... Uh, not that Anand is as old as Korshner was. Smyslov, <clears throat> even though they play well, they play much worse than at their best. Much worse. So even when Korshner was in his 70s and he was playing 2600 Fide, which made him like number 150 in the world, I mean, he was number two and three in the world. So even though he's playing fine, he's not playing like he used to. Um, but yeah, that's the closest that we get is, you know, we try to play almost as good as we used to, but we can't. And Anand, you know, is a good example of an outlier because he's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Uh, yeah, but obviously he's not the Anand of 20, 30 years ago when he was, you know, fighting for the world championship. 
but he's you know, still good. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> the truth hurts. As as that uh, as that uh, train showed. <clears throat> okay. So before the game, I did about an hour of prep, and I was looking at D four, and I looked at his games, and I decided to play B three, which I played, and I didn't know what he would do. So I looked at two different lines, one with E five and the way that he played. And in this position, GMs play every move. They play G3 and Knight F3 and E3 and C4 and E4 and G4. And Bishop takes F6. And I decided to play G4 because I looked at it and I thought he wouldn't know it. And I was right. And what's funny is when I play G4 in Bullet Online, I've only faced Bishop G7. That's it. I've never looked. I've never looked at G four with an engine and with you know, with a database. But I did, and I had a game I was going to follow from Esipenko, I think. But anyway, he played here, which I've never faced before. But I very briefly looked at it because I saw it in the database, and we're both. I mean, he's playing really slowly, and here, Potomarev actually had white in a blitz game. Most of the games are blitz games because this is silly. And Potomaryov won against another GM by playing e3, defending his pawn, h3, knight c3, queen e2, castles, f4. You know, game was about equal, and he won. That's probably what I should do. But I played this because I couldn't remember what people had done, and this got 80% in the database. But it's a very bad move because the people who play it are terrible. Now, one thing I don't understand, and I'm going to learn right now, is there was an Esipenko game. <clears throat> There's more than one because he plays this in Blitz, not in Slow Chess, against another GM. And he played here, which I don't understand. I, I don't understand why he did that. His opponent didn't take on G4, but taking on G4 is fine. I don't know why his opponent didn't take on g4. But all right. His opponent played like d5, which is maybe even better. And I knew that. And I'm like, why would you play knight c3? So I played h4. Now, in the database, which has very few games and the players aren't very good, nobody's played the best move, which my opponent did, played d5. That's the best move. And... The engine says these moves are fine. Bishop h3, it's not really, rec you know, it's okay. d4 is good. e3 is fine. c5 is fine. Queen f3 is fine. Knight c6. Now, my position is not very good here, but it's very interesting. And here I blundered. Um, and I'm losing after my next move. Uh, I just missed what he did. Uh, and in fact, I missed it here, and I missed it the next move. But the engine says if I saw it, it doesn't matter. So here I think I have to play g5. But my game is not very good here. It's, I mean, h4 is not a good move. And I played this, and he thought forever. Because I was analyzing knight e5, and I moved my queen. Um, and I was analyzing knight b4. And he played bishop g7, which is the strongest move, and not because it develops a piece and castles and it's normal. It's because he has a big threat now, which I missed. <laughs> um, if I had seen it, I guess I wouldn't have lost a pawn, but the engine says I'm like virtually lost here. So it doesn't like h4 that I played on move 4, and it doesn't like knight e2. It says knight e2 is a blunder. Um, but I just didn't see his next move. So I played here, and I had analyzed this, and then after I played it, I was like, oh. And by the way, we're both playing very slowly, um, both of us, but I think he's playing slower than I am. And after I moved, I was like, oh. <laughs> and he played here, and I'm just lost now. Although you could argue I was lost you know, after 92. I didn't see knight g4 until after I moved, and I was like, oh, so bishop takes, knight here is winning. So I'm pretty lost here. Um, 
Yeah. Anyway, h4 is not a good move. And d5 is the best move that's never been played. And then he played really well. And I'm losing here. And we both knew I was losing. But the game was very tense because we're both thinking forever. We're both getting in time trouble. And, you know, you can easily make a mistake. And the engine's just like, no, no, this was an easy game. But, you know, the game took almost four hours and we were both in time trouble. And you could feel that if one of us blundered, we'd lose right away. But, yeah, I mean, if I'm going to play a weird opening to confuse my opponent, I should know it better. I learned the move H6 today. I've never seen it before. And then he played it. And then I still didn't know what to do because it's such a... It's such a... Uh, something. And so forth. Uh, let's see. Canty's here. Hey, Canty. Go, Canty. I'm savagely losing, yeah. Uh, yeah, I saw that game. I, I prepared for him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the weird thing, James, is that Doug Eckert's is beating everybody. I've, I've never seen him do that. Doug Eckert's crushing everybody. He has four and a half out of five. He's paired up four games. He beat two IMs and a GM, and he drew another GM, and he beat somebody lower rated. Yeah, it's really weird. Yeah. Uh, I have three out of five paired down all five rounds. I just lost. So if I had won, this would be a nicer stream. I'd be tied for first. And, well, actually, I'd be tied for second. Yeah. Yeah, I don't understand how Doug Eckert is crushing everybody. Man, playing great, too. He's too good. Fedorowicz did some weird stuff this tournament, which he does. He's pared down all five rounds, and then some. Some of his opponents are three, four, five hundred points lower. And with White, he has three quick draws, like less than half an hour. And then he won both games with Black. So I don't know. Yeah. Well, there's only one round left, so... Hopefully I don't lose. I think if I lose, I'll be under 2,500 for the first time since, like, 1989. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. Well, that's what uh, Public Enemy would say. 1989. I'm another sucker. Okay, so he played I Castled. And all his moves are, like, the right move. He played H5, putting in an H. I retreated, hoping to kick something. E5 is the best move. He thought forever on every move. Like, we were both just thinking forever. Knight F6 is the best move. Rook takes his best. You know, I want to play Knight F5, but he played Queen D7. That's the best move. He took, which is right. He castled, which is right. And he played Knight E5, which is right. As long as he keeps the king's side blocked, he's winning. He's up a pawn, and these pieces are absurd. But if I made him, then I'm okay. Uh, okay, I played rook e1. I thought he was going to put one of his knights here, but he played rook e8, which is fine. Then I didn't know what to do, so I went here. <laughs> um, b5 traps my knight. Then I decided to maneuver my knight to f4, and I did. Um, he thought forever here, forever. And I thought he was going to take this, and I thought b4 was also good. And he played a6, which is the engine move. I mean, I can't crack his king's side. And being down a pawn isn't the worst of it. The worst of it is my queen side pieces just don't play. Okay, so I maneuvered my knight again. I don't want him to take this, so... Get my knight to g5, take, my knight's good there, I don't know. Bishop h6 is the best. Always play king b1. And queen c6 is a really strong move. Um, because my my queen on, on g2 
is defending my d2 pawn. So if I don't want to trade queens, I have to play queen g3. And then he takes my d2 pawn, and I don't have anything for it. And we were in time trouble by now, especially me. Let's see if that noise was something good. Patrick of the Isles. Hooray! Everybody says I'm the best humorist because they, they watch me play chess. Okay, so I traded queens. I defended my pawn. He attacked my pawn. I blocked his bishop because I can't really defend my pawn. <clears throat> I don't want to play d3 because that gives away the e3 square. So I played here. Knight e7 is good. I didn't want to play f6 because then I don't have any counterplay. It just moves his knight somewhere. Um, so I played here. And then here. And here I was trying to play knight d3 so I could put pressure here. So he stopped me. Then I wanted to play knight f4. And he let me. And I just can't do anything here. So I did that because I was going to lose on time. That gave me 30 seconds extra. And that gave me another 30 seconds. Then I didn't lose on time. I should play rook h. It doesn't matter. I'm lost. I, the reason I played rook e1 is after rook here takes takes, I can't do anything. But after here here takes takes, then I'm threatening knight d3 because this knight... When I say threatening, not really. But, um, okay, so he played this, which is fine. I'm down three pawns. Never play f6. And we, we were just trying not to lose on time at this point. So if his knight moves, I have rook g6 check, which is still winning for him. If his king goes here, I play knight d5 check and win his knight. So he played here. And I can't do anything, so I decided to win a piece and lose, instead of not win a piece and lose. And then I resigned. So he played really well that game, and my opening was bad, and then I played bad after my prep. Like, h4 is bad, knight e2 is bad. Um, yeah, and then I just, I got no chance. Like, the game went forever, we were both in time trouble, but I was never in the game, I was always lost. And, you know, I, I knew I was lost, but I thought I might get some chances, but he just played too well. So that's, you know, because I didn't play well. So that makes it easier for him to play well, I guess. But yeah, h4 was a pretty silly move. It has a good score, but it's a very bad move. I didn't analyze h6 enough because I'd never seen h6 until today. And I was like, well, everybody plays bishop g7 there, so you probably won't play h6. And I looked at what people had done, but I sort of forgot and... I knew h4 had a good score. So like, he obviously didn't know the theory. He fought forever before h6. So I figured I'll just keep playing aggressively. Much to my detriment. I want to say I was losing before he was born. But actually, we're both 51. And he's younger than me. So maybe I was losing the first four months of my life. I think he's the youngest player in the tournament. Because you have to be 50 and over. And he's 51 and I'm 51. But he's he's younger than me. He can barely play in the tournament. 